Welcome to the power of faith and the ministry of David Hathaway. Please join David as he ministers today's word. you to rise up and do something for the glory of God in the power of the Holy Ghost and in the name of Jesus. We're living in a time of real spiritual warfare, of not just saying, oh, I'm going to bind the power of the devil, but getting out there where the devil is and trancing him head on until we get the victory. I believe in action. God has called us into the kingdom, and if you are a born-again, baptized, spirit-filled believer, God has done that for a reason. God didn't save you and call you so that you can sit at ease. We are saved to serve, not just to have a wonderful life. We don't all have to be preachers, but the fact is that we are saved to live for God. He's called us, but we have to make it happen. I believe in prayer, and I believe in miracles. But miracles happen when God uses men and women to work the miracles. I hear people all over the world say, oh, it's not the time for evangelism, and if God wants to save people, he will do it himself. No, God sent his son into the world to die on the cross to set the world free, but we have to declare it. It's no use just sitting there. God needs people. He needs people to give financially. Especially he needs businessmen who will turn their businesses over to work for him and produce money for the kingdom. God will honor and prosper businessmen when they get that vision to devote their money and their business to winning souls. And we also need people who will intercede and pray. I couldn't achieve what I do without people all over the world who are interceding and praying for me. And of course, we need the preachers. In Exodus chapter 3, Moses was a very ordinary man, busy doing a job, keeping the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law. And as he led the flock to the back of the desert, to Horeb, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. Moses looked, and the bush burned but was not consumed. Sometimes God has to do something unusual in our lives to attract our attention, to make us turn aside from the cares of the world, from the responsibilities that we have, from those business problems, from our sickness, our pain, and all those other problems we've all got. God wants us to turn aside like Moses and look at him. I want you to understand, if God is going to deal with you, if God is going to call you, if God is going to use you, And God wants to use every one of you. If you're not in a position where he can use you, 
Then examine your spiritual life and ask the question, Why am I saved? Because you are saved to serve him. Jesus said, Let him who would be the greatest among you be your servant. And for those of us looking for honor and esteem, and those of us looking for position in spiritual life, let me remind you that position begins with servanthood. Let them become your servant. I want to emphasize that God called me. I didn't choose to serve God. Jesus said in his own words, You did not choose me, I chose you. He chose us and called us in order that we might serve him. And I believe that he has called every single born-again believer to serve him in some way. And once you are called into service, you will need the Holy Spirit's fire and power because you cannot make it on your own. I remember the day when the Lord challenged me to serve him. I was 15 years old on holiday on the south coast of England, walking on the seafront with some young Christians. But I couldn't enter into the fun that they were having because God was speaking to me. And the devil was speaking to me. The devil was saying, don't listen, it's okay, things are fine. You're doing well. You got saved when you were eight. You got baptized in water when you were 12. You started preaching when you were 13. That's enough. But God was saying, I want more. God was not calling me to be a preacher or an evangelist at that time. God was asking me to give my whole life to him, simply everything to him. I remember the battle that summer's evening as the sun began to go down. It became such a strong battle that I had to separate myself from the others. The devil was saying, don't do it. You're doing enough. Don't do any more. And God was saying, I want you, David. I want everything you have and everything you are. At that moment, God did not say, you're going to be a preacher. You're going to be an evangelist. You're going to be a missionary. It was to say, David, I want all or nothing. And I was only 15 years old. That's where we begin with God. It's all or nothing. You can't play with God. You can't fool with him. What are you called for? Are you called to live for God or for yourself? To have a good time, a family and a big house, a car and a successful business, and just to go on until your pension comes? No, when God called you, he said, I want everything, including your success. I understood that night on the beach that God was trying to get my attention. One of the battles God has is to get our attention. And with Moses, God had to do something extraordinary. Moses was looking after the sheep. He'd got himself married, had some children, and was busy, tied up with all the problems that you have, working hard to get enough money to feed his growing family, when suddenly, out in the desert, God appeared to him in a burning bush. What attracted Moses was not that the bush was on fire, but that the fire didn't burn the bush. There is a time when the fire of God will burn up the impurities in your life. But when he starts to put the fire into you, he doesn't want to destroy you. He wants to use the real you. God knows who you are. Sometimes when I'm having problems and I have to say, like Paul, Lord, I'm sorry I should have done this and I shouldn't have done that. And when I'm trying to make excuses and say, I'm not perfect, I can't do this, and Lord, you know the problems I have in my life, God says, look, I knew you before you were born. I made you, and it's about time you understood, I made you just as you are for a purpose. God was calling Moses. I want you to go to Pharaoh and tell him, let my people go. Just do it. Please understand, Moses was a human being, no different from you. 
All right, he was born into a humble family, but he was adopted by a woman of wealth, the king's daughter. And then he had some problems. And as a result, he's now living in relative poverty out in the desert with a family and responsibilities like you. So he's human. And he argued with God. Look, when I talk to my own people, let alone Pharaoh, they won't listen to me. How did God convince Moses? God's answer was very simple. What is it that you have in your hand? God took the ordinary common thing Moses had in his hand, his shepherd's rod, and used that as the demonstration. God will use those troubles, those tribulations, those difficulties, those everyday things that you have in your life to speak to you. When I think of the number of troubles I've had being in a communist prison for a year, having cancer twice, having gunmen sent on three occasions to shoot me, God uses every circumstance to his glory. He uses the problems and the difficulties in our lives to convince us miraculously. With Moses, first God had to use the miracle of the burning bush to attract his attention. And secondly, in Exodus chapter 4, verse 3, he commanded Moses, throw your rod on the ground. He did, and it became a serpent. Moses ran. He was afraid. The problem is so many people are afraid when they see the power of God and they run away from the reality of what God wants to do in their lives. You have got to want the miracle. Why do I see so many miracles in my ministry? I want miracles. I live for miracles. I live to see the glory and the power of God. Often it's difficult, but I won't give up. I won't let go of God until he works the miracles. Because God cannot fail. In the West, you can live, even as a Christian, without one iota of faith. From the cradle to the grave, you can get medical and financial benefit from the state like anyone else. Okay, it's not much. But if you're in difficulty, you can find help without faith. That is why if you want real faith, God may have to bring some major crisis into your life to get your attention. I thank God when I look back for the crises in my life because that's how I have learned faith and how I have learned to trust God. And that's why miracles happen today. listening to the power of faith broadcast with david hathaway we would love to hear from you contact us by visiting www.eurovision.org.uk also available online are a large assortment of videos magazines and books for your growth in god we would like to give all new subscribers to david's ministry a free gift to receive your free gift visit www.eurovisiontv.org 
Remember, those who know their God will be strong and do exploits. Worship used by kind permission of Vinesong, www.vinesong.com.